Hey everybody, it's Jim of Animated Educated, and yes, we are in the Ink and Paint Club. Yes, that's right. And hopefully you're a member of the Ink and Paint Club because today we're going to learn all about how to ink and paint animation cells the way they used to do it long, long ago. And uh, they don't really do it anymore, so which is actually sometimes a good thing I've learned. So let's get with it, and uh, you're going to need some things. If you're going to follow along with me, you're going to need uh, like uh, some sort of container of water, okay? You're going to need some paint brushes. You're going to need some cell paint, which we'll talk about later. Um, if you can find some chopsticks, you might need a chopstick. Uh, if you have any cotton gloves, that would be perfect. I don't have any cotton gloves, so you'll see what I'm doing uh, to kind of not touch the cell. Um, but cotton gloves are a good thing to get, and we need a paint holder, like a palette, to put the paint in, and uh, we need some cells or some sort of celluloid material. You can get a plastic cell like this one. Um, this is actually uh, punched with Acme punches right there and it comes with this little protected sheet that always comes with cells and the whole goal of this is just to um to keep your fingers your oily fingers off of the surface of the cell that's the whole goal of this and um here's kind of what it looks like so here's a cell that has already been painted long ago and I actually have some of the uh, cell paint numbers that I used and you can see what I did here is I this is just uh, this one here is very just uh, flat colors and then I tried to do a little fancy stuff in here with the shading like his elbows and his arms and stuff like that and then over here on this side is just another flat one a little bit uh, darker on certain things a little lighter on the skin than this one, things like that. But this is inked on this side and then painted on this side, like this. So you can see when it's painted, it's very, very flat. Let's get a focus in on that, Toby. Okay, there we go. So you can see, you can see a little bit of that, what that looks like. It's very dull. Uh, and Mike, I need a new camera guys maybe someone can help me find a new camera but see there we go it's very dull and that's what you would be painting they are painting those colors and the one thing about cell uh, painting is you gotta let it dry you want to you want to paint the whole cell in one one sitting you can't you gotta wait till certain parts of that uh cell dries and then you can go back and do it again um Depending on how many colors you want to put on your cell, you kind of have to figure out each cell is different and you're just trying to figure out the best way of painting it and letting it dry and then painting the next uh, color on it. So let's take a look at uh, how to ink cells right now. Now, there are a few things you're going to need to do that. The one thing is you're going to have to get yourself a rapidograph pen. So this is made by Coronor, and this one is a number 60, I think, point. You don't want something real, you don't want the point to be too thick and you don't want it to be super razor thin. You want a medium point. So this is a 60 and it does a pretty good job. Um, you also need some, um, you need, you're gonna need some artwork. So you can either I'm going to show you that you could draw it on animation bond using uh, pegs, things like that. But you don't really need that. You can draw, draw it on uh, type, you know, like regular uh, copy paper if you like. Um, you will need to get some uh, cotton gloves, which I do not have. And I really wish I had them because uh, whenever you're handling your cells, uh, it's plastic. So your fingers are very oily and uh it just takes a couple touches of that and when you try to draw using the ink 
for film, it will not apply or it bubbles up or you go like this and you actually see the film fingerprint. So, uh, so I don't have any gloves, so I have to kind of pretend I have it or whatever. Anyway, this is the ink. This is an, <laughs> I got this a little bit too much of this. This is uh, for Cornor paint, but if you notice, it says for paper and film, and that's what you want. Because if you just get regular Indian ink, it will not apply to the film. It'll just kind of beat up and and roll off. So uh, this is that. And they don't usually make it this big. I don't know why I got, I thought this was a small amount, but <laughs> anyway, I'll be able to use this for probably the next couple of years maybe 20 years i don't know anyway uh but you can get smaller amounts they sell it you just look for the one that says for paper and film okay so you come up with a drawing you put it on paper and in this case i've drawn this onto animation bond and there it is little my little design and i took this and I took a sheet of acetate. You can actually buy acetate uh, in art stores, or you can buy, I believe you can get like a hundred pieces of acetate. Not, not the kind that's super thin, but uh, something that's a little bit thicker, not super thick either. So anyway, once you've got your uh, acetate uh, down, you're gonna use, uh, I don't have any gloves, so I'm using these two kind of, they're like, uh, they come with the acetate. It's like a very thin um, piece of paper. And I'm using that just to block my oil from my hand getting on the uh, acetate. And you notice I stroke the ink line on. I just, I don't just push it, just drive it along. I, I kind of stroke it on sometimes. It's a little easier to do it that way. And sometimes with this pen, it will uh, kind of, you know, you go to draw on on the cell and it won't, nothing will come out. So you gotta have to give it a little shake and then go back and then now the ink is like inside that tip and you can draw with it. So here I'm just doing some quick lines here on the hand. I'm inking that. And there's a trick to inking. You have to kind of start in, you know, uh, you know on the outside and try to work your way through the drawing here. I'm using a um, a Chopstick to actually hold down the cell so it doesn't move around when I start uh, You know drawing on it and that's very helpful Also, uh, if I make any mistakes with my lines, I can always sharpen that little stick and Get wet the tip of it and use it like an eraser. It will actually erase the uh, unwanted ink line which you'll see in a little bit now what I'm doing here is I'm telling you that I'm gonna draw this using my wrist using the motion of my wrist if I was trying to draw it the other way it's a little harder you're pushing up and pushing away from it here you're actually using your wrist to kind of curve the line like that and down it's a little easier and in this one here I'm just kind of going through and showing you how I do that. Um, I think I did make a little mistake on that line there. I'm getting nitpicky now, but uh, yeah. So there you can see a little bit of that line sticking out on that curb, and that's not what I want, but I'm not going to fix it yet. I'm going to go and ink everything that I want to ink and make sure that I have it all inked, and then I go back and fix all the little line mess-ups during the thing. Here's a bunch of little teeth and if I had a thicker uh, tip that would be really hard to get all that detail. It would uh, so anyway I'm just kind of moving the drawing around and moving my kind of tracing papers around so I don't touch the cell. Again if you use a uh, you know you can cut out the first couple fingers of a, of a cotton glove and that's really nice because you can feel your your uh, hold on to your uh, pen and then you can also the rest of the hand is has a glove on it so you can move around on that cell and it's not touching no skin is touching the cell so here I'm just outlining the eyes like that and again putting in little details 
and that's the thing um you know sometimes i find myself when i was doing this drawing i would do certain details and then i'd want to draw the stuff around it but i couldn't because the the ink's still wet so then i'd have to kind of go somewhere else on the drawing and draw something there where i'm not going to get it uh you know messed up or anything so here i'm just going to stroking on the line here and trying to keep the thickness and everything and doing the other side and um, yeah that's what I'm doing again it, it helps if you have a gloves <laughs> it's a lot easier you don't have to have all this paper on here but see here's a little close-up detail I'm putting the I'm drawing it on just keeping it moving you know keeping the ink moving now so, see if I had you know any uh, you know fingerprints on that it would bubble up the ink and uh, that's a bad thing so here I'm just stroking on these lines connecting them and trying to put everything together And as you can see, it takes a long time to ink uh, one cell. So you're letting that other stuff dry, and now you're going over here to some other place on the drawing. You're starting to put these little details in here. And you're just trying to keep it consistent. That's why I'm holding on to the, using that uh, chopstick to help me uh, hold the acetate to the drawing so I can get an accurate tracing. And then I do the foot. And then I'll continue to do the rest of it later on. Um, so there's that little thing I showed. My camera's going out of focus, but uh, yeah. So there I'm just removing that with a wetted uh, tip of a sharpened uh, chopstick. Just pushing the ink out of the way and straightening it, getting rid of it, just erasing it basically. And that's it. That's how it's done. Okay. So this is my Coronor pen. A Rapidograph pen right there. And so once you've got everything inked, uh, you've flipped over the drawing. And you're going to paint on the opposite side that you inked on. So I have a bunch of uh, different paints here. Uh, mainly, I'm doing the, I'm actually doing the shading first. So I've got a little shading on the skull here. I'm gonna put that on, and that's really what you want to do first: is do the shading or any highlights first on your drawing, and then let that dry, and then you can go back and start putting in all the. Uh, colors on top of that shading or highlight so I kind of remember this as I'm going through this <laughs> tutorial I'm going wait a minute uh, it's kind of taking a while for this stuff to dry I have to wait so here I'm trying to stay away from that one area and just put in some little shading here on her arm using the same color as I did on the side of his face and that's the other thing you want to make sure that as you paint you're painting all that color that you need for that one part of your uh, of your drawing you don't want to have to draw you know you don't want to paint her face which is white and then come back uh, later and paint her arm which is white you know you want to do all the white stuff first whatever whatever color it is uh, you just want to get it all in one go one pass and then it dries, and then you can apply the other, uh, you know, colors. So, yes, it does take a long time for this to do this. And right now I'm just putting all, like I said, oh, I'm yawning. <laughs> it is rather boring to watch. But, um, yeah. The other thing about the paint is you notice that I'm not, I'm not stroking it on really hard. I'm I'm basically I'm 
loading up my paint brush with this paint and then I'm kind of dabbing it into the area that I want to start with and I'm actually just kind of pushing it around and that's the one thing you want to remember um, and that's why it's backlit here because this is a white color and I want to make I'm trying to make sure that it's a consistent layer it's not too thick it's not too thin if it's too thin, you're going to see th those lines. Uh, it's going to be real thin, and the color is going to be real bright. So you just have to kind of put it down like this and get it in there. And you're just pushing the paintbrush around with the paint on it. Not a lot of work. It does take longer to paint this one little area, though. You see, because you kind of paint a little, and then you're going back and you're loading up your paintbrush again and you're kind of pushing it pushing the paint basically and sometimes you do make mistakes when you might go which I did here I went over the eye line a little bit too much in one point but again later on you can let the paint dry and then you can uh, come back with a you know like a a wetted um, you know, like tip of your paintbrush, you know, the wooden part, or, you know, what I'm using here is the uh, chopstick. So there's her face, and then I'm going to let that face dry, and I'm going to go over to this one. And luckily this one, I, it's all the same color, so I can kind of dab it in like this, and go right over those teeth. I don't have to, he doesn't have any different colored teeth, so that's good. If he did, I would probably do that first, and then I'd go back and I put all this white stuff on top. So there it is. So you're just kind of putting, and at this point, the uh, the shaded paint has dried enough so that I can paint over it. That's the one thing you don't want to have your paints, you know, still wet, and then all of a sudden you're painting over them because they will start to mix and it won't look what you want it to look like um, so there it is just doing that right now so see how thin that is right there so now I'm gonna just thicken it up a little bit more and I'm trying not to go over my lines because I don't want to have to go back and you know especially if you had to do if you had other drawings that you know I mean this is just one drawing but if you had a whole series where this animation is moving around all had all these drawings of of the characters moving you have to go through and make sure that you get all those inks all the paint on there the right way first you don't want to have to go back and fix every single thing if you don't have to. So that's why you're very careful at the beginning just to paint this out like this. All right. So now I'm just thickening it in, trying to keep it all the same, uh, you know, thickness throughout. And that's where the, the, you know, light table comes in handy. So there we go. So that's what I have so far. And if I turn on the light, you can see kind of how it's drying, how it looks. It's very kind of, you can see it's a lot of kind of watery, kind of shiny. Yeah, it's a little hard to see here, but if I mainly just trying to keep it consistent. And uh, let's see, see, so you can see some of the, what it kind of looks like. And so that's what I would do. I would just finish that that's all the colors that I want for that and then I would go back and let it dry and right now uh, I'm applying a different color because it's not affecting anything in this area so I'm just go ahead and put that color down here and uh, yeah do that it's kind of an off gray uh, light kind of gray for his his tuxedo so again, just loading up that brush, pushing it around, filling up the space, not really brushing at all, just kind of pushing around and 
letting the paint kind of you know and it's not very thick you notice that paint it does have some water in it but you know I did not add any water to this paint I just kind of shook it up real good if it is real dry you can add just a little little bit of paint but you don't want it to be real runny it's very you think of it as like I don't know kind of like thick thick paint that when you put it down it's not going to run it's just going to sit there all right so there it is it's looking pretty good this right here is a turquoise paint which I I had for a long long time and I used it on this one but I discovered that it took a while a lot, lot longer for it to dry it was um, very tacky it took about two days to get uh, fully dry so here it is it's on his pants and it's on his jacket and everything else so let's move on to the next part of this painting another thing is using uh, older paints uh, what happens is when you have an older paint it, you haven't used it for a long time it separates and the liquid is on top and then the most of the paint kind of hardens at the bottom so you have to mix it up um, usually if that happens it's just better to get a new set of paint uh, because it's really hard to bring it back to life uh, it's just too old. The other thing I wanted to let you know is sometimes when you are painting, you'll get these little bubbles, and that's because you've sh you know you've sh shook up the paint, and sometimes air bubbles get in there. The only thing that you can do to to stop that is to just like let it dry a little bit and paint over it, or as it's bubbling up, you can just use something like a toothpick or something and just pop those little bubbles, and then uh, apply your paint. Um, yeah, air bubbles in paint quite common. And now here are the paints I've been using. We're left with the original Toon Tones paints. Here's the ink I'm using right now. It's for film, paper or film. That's what you want. And you're going to need a Rapidograph pen. Just like this one. So this is the final cell I painted using the Toon Tone colors and took my time at it. Each color you have to kind of you know, let dry, and uh, so you know, you might, depending on how many colors you have per cell, it might take a few days uh, to actually finish the completed cell. And imagine if you had a whole sequence of cells you had to paint, you'd be doing that for a long time. Could be several weeks before you actually had your scene inked and painted and then ready to go. Okay, there you have it. That's how to ink and paint cells. And the best thing you have to do is just to do it yourself. Just, if you want, get the, get the materials together. I want to thank the uh, makers of Toon Tone Paints for, for keeping this in the world. And uh, I did not get, be, I'm not sponsored by them in any way to push their product. I think it's a great product. I had to go out and buy this stuff myself. So if you are a Toon Tone representative and you'd like to send me some more colors, maybe we can do some more cell painting with your product. I'm just putting it out there. I don't know. Anyway, uh, yeah. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. And if you'd like to subscribe, you can uh, press that button right there. And uh, I also have some other videos up here that you might be interested in. All right. So uh, take a look at those, and we'll see you next time on Animated Educated.